Okay, I'm Dave Sensei Neil. As everyone who knows me from the forums, um, basically this demo is going to be on stabilising and stabilising equipment. Um, basically, I now stabilise with what's known as cactus juice. It's made by Mesquite Man over in America, good old Curtis. Um, and this is one of his vacuum chambers. You do need a clear chamber for vacuum because as you'll see in the demo, um, the air bubbles really come out. And for those of you who have done it in their pressure pots, you'll understand why you've got resin all at the bottom of your pressure pot and the product didn't get stabilised. Basically I've got it running to a, a trap because every now and then the bubbles go all the way to the top and you do not want to get this stuff back to your pump. Um, I'm using a, a basically a refrigerator uh, vacuuming system pump. Um, mine looks a bit old but it's well used and, and still works well, touch wood. And that pulls full vacuum, so the full 30 inch head or 29.996 is the limit at sea level. And it uh, works well and we'll get underway shortly but just on a few other notes on vacuuming uh, and or stabilizing should I say is you can buy this product locally um, this is a wood preservative uh, you find it at marine shops also at I get this from fiberglass international great product but don't try and stabilize your pen blanks with it it works well if you stabilize your slabs but if you try doing a pen blank, you'll find as it dries, it dries in a weirdo shape. Uh, basically the blanks tend to bend um, because it takes a good week or so to dry. And unfortunately as they dry, the side that dries fastest is the one on the top. And so next week you end up with a whole heap of bananas. The best stabiliser if you're after a cheap, easy stabilising solution is good old thin CA. Um, if you turn your blank down, uh, even if it's if it's so soft it's sandpaper, uh, it's so soft it's like balsa wood, use your, your 20 grit or 40 grit chisel uh, to get it down to relatively small and then soak it in thin CA. The thing that you must remember is CA takes a long time to go off at depth. It goes off quickly in thin layers, which is what we're normally using it for, but at depth it takes a while. So Soak your blank and leave it overnight, is what I recommend. And so for those of you cheap stabilisation, works well. What I'm going to do today is, is a few things that I've, I've got ready in the last few days. Um, all things that are stabilised must be fully dry, if not over dried. Um, you can put them in the oven if your wife lets you. A very low temperature uh, overnight, but I wouldn't leave it while I went to sleep. I'd, be scared it'd go off. I've actually got a dedicated oven for my resin work but I actually dry things in a dehydrator. You can pick them up at eBay without any trouble and these have been overnight in the dehydrator so they're nice and warm that's why I've kept them there and that helps with the sticking as well. So I'll get them out in a minute but here's a bit of mango which I'll pass around that's lovely and spalted and rotten and horrible and these are from a slab that I've done uh, with the cactus juice and you can see the difference there. They're like this here is just soft mushy stuff uh, like balsa wood only softer. Uh, these hard as. Now they'll still be one as hard as an Australian hardwood but quite easy to turn so I'll pass them around and you can have a squeeze at them. But today what I'm going to do is something that I'm actually going to cast this afternoon in the demonstration. And these are some seed pods. These come from a, a cedar tree down in Melbourne that just happens to be growing outside my sister's new unit. Uh, they're really pretty seeds and they, they really come out well. Uh, here's some already cut pendant blanks and I'll pass them around. See what they look like. Right. The other thing I'm going to cast today is some um, is some bark that I've, again I've already cast 
in the drying out process last night, you can even see it's starting to crack again. And bark is in laminations, and it, so it will crack, come apart, so you need to stabilise it. So I'm going to do three of those, and three of these pods, and you'll see how much air actually comes out of them. Just as an example, um, here is a banksia. I tend to cast banksia first, then I drill a hole in it, and then I'll stabilise it from the inside. And so there's one that's just been stabilised, so you can see the resin that's formed on the outside. You do have to cook cactus juice in the oven. I'll show you that after, after afternoon tea. And here's a stabilised blank. Now if you want to compare it, here's an unstabilised blank that you can put your fingernail in to the fluffy bits quite easily. But here you can't because it's turned hard. So I'll pass them around as well. <coughs> see how they turn out. And we'll see how we go. There's a, a pink one of a different type of seed pod. It's been cast and stabilised. So basically what we do is we just... This kit that you come, you get a clear container with a lid on it. And they've got a, a stand down the bottom to put the banks in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place them there with the seed pods up because that'll just help with the air exiting out of these. So I'll put them in there with spaces in between. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put ice cream sticks just to separate them on top. Then some more blanks. Again with the bark side up, just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so again you don't have to, but I just put some more ice cream sticks on the top, and then we put in this a weight that again comes with the kit. And then what I'm using is the the clear cactus juice. You can add various dyes not your normal dyes, they are a special dye that comes for the, so you do have to buy them separately but again Curtis does sell them. That's a blue that I love using for my pine, uh, for my corn cobs and that's a corn cob that's actually been stabilised already and I'll pass that round as well so you can have a squeeze of those. But basically all I'm going to do is pour this resin in Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't too impressed with it, to be honest. I think I've only done a couple. I might have sold one over the years. I've still got one on the Yeah, this resin <laughs> doesn't go off until it's actually baked. Um, although it will go off in time, so if you leave it for six months, it'll definitely go off. I keep mine in the fridge, which makes it last a long time. Uh, that blue one has been in the fridge for six months already and as you can see it's still very much liquid so it hasn't gone off and once these are done I'll actually pour the liquid back in the bottle put it back in the fridge. Oh, so it's reusable? Yep, you just reuse it over and over again and just keep topping it up so as when, you want. When you say going off you're talking about it, the consistency change in charting the It gel. gels. But at that point it, you can obviously see it's starting to become less effective before that gets to that yep. stage? Or? Yeah, you'll, you'll see it, it's just turns to gel on then it's history and then it eventually goes hard as a rock. And uh, unfortunately the first load I got from America <laughs> was exactly that. <laughs> it gelled on the way. So and Neil, your, uh, your vacuum pot, is that something that you've made up yourself? Or is that no, no, that's no, again, it's Curtis it's sells those. But there's no reason why you can't make it. That's about... So we put our, put our vacuum on, that's our vacuum pump going. Basically put the lid on making sure there's no dirt or anything in between and clean on top and basically seat it in and then on that's with the valve open never start your vacuum with the valve closed likewise never turn it off with the valve closed always have it open because otherwise you can actually hurt the machine so what we're going to do is just slowly close this and you'll start Start to hear the vacuum. And then you'll start to see 
really goes to town. You can see by the gauge there, still not completely got vacuum. I've got to be careful because so many bubbles come out. You'll see how the resin is bubbling almost up to the surface. Yeah. And I've got to keep it below the top. Now I'm vacuuming there at the moment. This gauge is dials a little bit out. I'm about 25 to 26 inches at the moment. So it's nowhere near full vacuum. And you can see how much air is coming out. Now what you've got to remember under vacuum um, the bubbles expand so a tiny little bit of air for that big becomes a bubble this big. And that's uh, the square of the the difference for every um, 10 or one, one inch etc. I've forgotten my diving scales already. <laughs> but basically I'm just going to keep slowly increasing the pressure until the bubbles aren't so excited that it reaches the top. Well, that's basically it there. So I've got that on full vacuum now and I'll continue that until there's minimal bubbles coming out. And then what I'll do is I'll actually switch off the vacuum and let it soak for another half an hour. The liquid will take the place of all the air that's, that's right. Out. Now, you know, so if you notice where the liquid level is there now, so if we put a pencil mark, but I just hold my finger there, you watch what happens, how low it goes, when I let the vacuum off. No, not that much. Some blanks, it'll actually go you know, down a good quarter of an inch or more. And, uh, and you see the resin's been sucked in, and now it takes a while for those bubbles to come start coming back out again. We'll just see how we go. So that's basically vacuuming, stabilising. Uh, what we'll do later on today is when it starts uh, about when we go for afternoon tea, I'll actually switch the vacuum off because it should be about finished by then. And it'll then soak for a good half an hour, so ready for the next stage, which is the cooking, wrapping and, and processing. But these will be finished today, so it's, it's all good news. So that's about it on the stabilising front. Is there any questions on stabilising? that I can ask why well, people can ask. Uh, none of this fluid available in Australia, I understand. No, unfortunately <laughs> it's not. Um, I have tried products around. I've shredded up some Perspex and melted it in acetone. It is a similar product, uh, but you don't need to bake that. But again, it takes weeks to go off and go hard. Yeah. Um, like I said, this is the best product I've found. I've, I've used the epoxies. <coughs> Maybe you reckon that wood, wood uh, that white green, I think the green or something, is that white wood uh, re repairer? Well, that's what you use in the wood. wood. That's, yeah. yeah. Wood hardener. The wood hardener. Yeah. That's another product you can use. <coughs> and indeed, I still do my coffee beans in those. Um, because it, I can see where it's actually been. Uh, wood hardener is a product you can get in Australia. It will work, not cheap, um, but it doesn't dry completely clear. So if you've got uh, something that you want to maintain the colour, uh, they say it dries clear, but it's yeah. it's a milky colour. It dries too. But like I said, I, I do my coffee beans in that, and what I do with those is I soak them like this, and then I actually put them under pressure as well. Because a, a coffee bean, you've got the shell on the outside. When you buy coffee beans from the supermarket, um, the shell's been removed, they've been roasted, and you've got the bean. But there's another secondary part of the bean inside the bean. And when you're turning, if you don't stabilise them, you're turning and that little inner bit goes fling and goes flying off. So what you've got to do is you've got to soak the product through the first part of the nut and get that intermediate bit.
and, uh, and that's pretty hard to do so it takes a while to do and so I yeah, tend yeah, to yeah. soak them for a long time till the point where the bean is quite soft and squishy then I'll give them a quick wash and then I'll leave them out the sun to dry and again I'll dry them for a month before I use them uh, what you've got to keep in mind is under vacuum it does things go off quicker so the biggest trouble with that milky product is that it does go gelatinous as soon as you put under vacuum and if you keep stirring it I put under vacuum for 15 minutes then stir it it seems to re-emulsify um, but it's it's a good product but that's basically stabilising in a nutshell. We'll yeah, go if back you're stabilising the bigger blanks, say for your coffee grinders and that, have you got a, a, a bigger pot that you use for vacuum? I don't have at the moment. Yeah, I don't. Have to make one. <laughs> yeah, you have to make one. I, I tend to use CA in those right, circumstances. So and I just soak it. I've got some big banks of nuts on the lathe at the moment. And I've basically ground it in what you yeah. would normally use as a small bottle. It's taken a whole one of those to do the whole blank. And then I'll leave it for a few weeks to, to harden up. Um, because, yeah, I'd love to be able to put it in a big container, but I just yeah, don't have one yeah. big enough. And unfortunately, the pots, you just can't see what's happening. And you can see by that bubbling that's happened, uh, the people that put it in their pots, it bubbles away. Yeah, and it. even normal bits of wood that's a, a beautiful, dense gidgey, for example, do contain air. And people think, oh, I've boiled my resin, because there's the boiling port of resins goes down under vacuum. Um, likewise, uh, when under pressure, it goes up. So you'll get your resins after you've cast them, they'll be quite cold. Yeah. And that's because of the pressure in the pot. It takes longer for the cure. That's right. Pressure, yeah. So you'll have it mixed in a cup, and you'll see it going off, and then you take your lid off your pot, and it's still liquid, because it takes longer to go off in a pot than pressure. But we'll get to that when we get to the pressure pots. But this is going pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It'll, I'll um, just keep that going, and slowly the, the bubbles do eventually stop. But uh, sometimes they keep going for a long, long time. <laughs> Basically, these vacuum chambers are, are made from clear perspex. <laughs> this particular one's made from 10 millimeters. Um, Curtis does make a larger one, uh, which is a, a really good one. You could probably make them yourself if you knew how. Um, but Curtis makes them pretty cheap and so for me it was easier to buy it than make it myself. Um, the trouble going bigger is that it does take a lot more resin. That's taken a litre in there uh, to fill it up. Uh, I do have... You don't necessarily have to make it square, you could make it long and narrow though. Any shape you, know, you like. Any shape. In fact, if old milk bottles, the plastic Milk bottle containers are perfect for carrying resin in. It's the same product uh, as the, the bottles that hold the resin. So often what I do with small short blanks is I'll actually cut off the top of a milk bottle so it fits in there and that uses less resin. Uh, it's a lot easier. How much resin are you going to get back out of the litre? That's probably only going to use 100 mil, uh, maybe 150. But that's yeah, about it. It doesn't like actually use that much. That was, that was four or six. Four or four or six. Points. There's six in six, there, yeah. but this one will take eight easily. Uh, I've just spread them out to make it a bit easier. Um, but it's what I'd like is actually a taller product, mm -hmm. so that it takes the same size, but you can have more layers. Because the biggest problem you've got is the air space you need. And if I had it that high, I could go to straight full vacuum straight away. Okay, well this is the second part of the... Actually, I need them. <laughs> this is the second part of the stabilising session. Um, we've basically turned off the vacuum. And we've had it set for half an hour now. And there's the resin's been sucked back into the blanks itself. And they're ready to be taken out and prepared for baking. Um, I use these gloves. These are Nitrile Blacks PF. Uh, they're the solvent and oil resistant free ones. If you use normal gloves, you find after a while the gloves no longer exist and you've got chemicals all over your hands. So, good product. Uh, I get these from 
Vox glass. Vox glass, which is where I'm currently getting my resin from. He's in Slacks Creek, Queensland, but I'm sure there's other suppliers around the place. So we've reduced the, the vacuum, so we take them off. And basically it's a case of now dissembling. We want to keep as much resin as we can because that all gets used again. You see my nice clean working surface. Basically, one blank at a time. I'll give it a good scrape. Trying to get as much resin as I can off it. Good shake. And then we wrap it in foil. Now we want to have a nice tight fit. So wrap it well. And although the, the brand of foil doesn't matter, it's better if it's a strong one because as this stuff goes off, it does expand. And the last thing you want is the foil to actually break because then the, the resin comes, as it cooks, it expands and it comes out of the blank. As long as the majority is done. And basically what I'm going to do is every single blank I'm going to do that to it. So that's wrapping it nice and tightly. It goes in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees C. My oven only goes down to 100 so that's what it is. And you bake them for one hour to one and a half hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish doing the rest of these and put them in the oven to bake while we do the casting demonstration and hopefully this will be finished as we leave. That's it. Any questions for you guys? No, no. That's cactus juice. Good stuff. <laughs>